Puppy Trades. We're broadcasting live from the bunker that I dug last night. No, but in all seriousness, I saw that NVIDIA was down 75% this morning, and I thought they had us. So we're going to talk about Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Advanced Micro Devices, Enphase Energy, the Dow Jones ETF DIA, Taiwan Semiconductors, Tesla, NEO, XPEV, Li Auto, Acromoto, Cloudfair, Okta, Autodesk, Pinterest, Palantir, Salesforce, Roku, Riot Blockchain, Microvision, Berkshire Hathaway, Disney, Boeing, Pfizer, Procter & Gamble, Walmart, and Lowe's. So before we get into it, a lot of people are asking, Puppy Trades, when do we get to celebrate, right? When are the bulls out of the woods? And you should never be celebrating. This is not a casino. If you were having trouble sleeping on Sunday night and Monday night, and then you woke up today and you were euphoric, that means that you're overpositioned and you didn't really have an exit strategy and that you weren't really managing risk. And being in a trade that you can't exit is called being a short seller. But if we look at our good friend, MSI Research, I introduced his work in my last video. You know, I don't trade based off this, but I'm very impressed with what he does. You know, I followed him. I really like what he's done. He's basically developed a sentiment indicator based on inflows and outflows. So I think it's pretty impressive. Let's see what he had to say uh, yesterday. He said the stock market's negative sentiment closed at 52, 52%, which was the highest value since the March 20 crash. He also said that the negative sentiment has been on the rise for six days straight, which was the longest streak, including the March 20 crash. Hence, it's a high probability for a stock market rebound tomorrow, and he was correct. So love his work, love what he does, love his data-driven approach. Let's see what I was saying, right? I think, you know, if we learned something about, you know, the stock market yesterday, it's something that I've really been preaching for a while. The first thing is that you cannot just stare at the S&P 500. You have to trade the stock market as a whole. So that's what me and Nancy Pelosi were doing on May 23rd. All right, we noticed that Apple was at the 61.8% retracement and that Microsoft was at the 61.8% retracement and Amazon was at the 61.8% retracement and NVIDIA was at the 61.8% retracement and it was breaking out on high volume, breaking this downtrend line and giving a lot of evidence that a very important wave two was in. So it blew past that minimum target of 697. So, you know, once we saw Apple start to break out, we said, okay, we're looking for Apple to go to 149. Then we're expecting a shallow wave four correction before going on a fifth wave higher. So he said Apple's wave three target was exactly 149.96 because that was the 161.8% extension of wave one. We look for a shallow wave four correction from there between the 23.6 and the 38.2% retracement to complete a shallow wave four before a wave five higher. And voila, Apple hit and kissed the 161.8% extension of wave one for that wave three, and then pulled back to the 23.6 to 38.2% retracement. Does this look like something that we should have been as afraid of since March, you know, 2020? This, I don't know. But anyway, let's look at Apple right now. I think it's a great place to start, especially when we start asking the question, you know, when do bulls get to celebrate? And I think advanced market devices and in-phase energy are really going to give us the best, you know, times to celebrate. But I think Apple is going to be a great indicator for bulls in the short term. Okay, so let's talk about this short term count. This was a wave one from the March 5th low. Then we had an ABC correction. We put in a wave two at the 61.8% retracement. Apple went past the length of wave one, placed at the wave two low, and it perfectly kissed the 161.8% extension of wave one for the textbook wave three target. It then pulled back to the 23.6 to 38.2% retracement target, which I predicted it would do when Apple was down here. So Apple uh, is between, or it was between 143 to 139. So there's a couple possibilities right now. The first is that wave four is still being corrected, okay? In that case, we want to see the 38.2% retracement cap this wave four of 139. What bulls really want to see is that the wave one high, which is 137, that also coincides with the 50% retracement of wave three, which is 136, will not be broken. And if it isn't, then the length of wave one placed at the wave four low will take Apple to 162 in about the next six to eight weeks. And that's based on 
uh, this wave one in time and price places the wave four low. Now, what's really interesting about 162, assuming that, th that this wave four is in at 142, is that this is also a similar number that we get when we take the length of wave one and we place it at the wave two low on the larger degree. So in Elliott wave theory, we say that it is fractal in nature. This is a wave one from the September 21st low. Notice that important lows put in, you know, right at quad witching. And we have this large wave one rally that forms a leading diagonal structure with three reactions on the upside, three reactions on the downside. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, large degree wave one. And ABC correction puts in a large degree wave two. So the length of wave one placed at the wave two low gives a conservative wave three target of 158. That's very conservative for wave three. On the smaller degree, we know how we're going to get there. This is wave one of wave three. This is wave two of wave three. This is wave three of wave three. And if apples above 136 to 137, we'll put in or have already put in wave four of wave three. And then the length of wave one placed at the wave four low will take Apple to 162 in the next six to eight weeks. So I think the first time bulls get to celebrate is when Apple gets back above 150. Confirms, you know, or at least gives a lot of evidence. This wave four is in. The length of wave one placed at the wave four low will take Apple into the 160s, most likely by the end of this quarter. So that's Apple. I think NVIDIA is another one bulls are really going to want to watch. So we got this stock split recently. I made that rookie mistake. I woke up, I saw NVIDIA was in the 180s, and I thought it was Black Tuesday. I really did. So, you know, we all make mistakes. This is what I have for NVIDIA. No matter how you count this wave one, it's very clear that this is a wave two correction, and a wave three impulse took place between 134 and 208. So in my opinion, there's almost no debate that this is a wave three. We have an A, B, C correction, and I believe we put in wave four at the 38.2% retracement. So it's very similar to Apple in that we don't want to see the 50% retracement of wave three go. So for Apple, that number is 136. For NVIDIA, that number is 171. And Apple's wave one high is 137. NVIDIA's wave one high is all the way down here at 162. And that's really the true wave four invalidation. For now, bulls don't want to see the 50% retracement of wave three, which is 171 go. Okay, if it doesn't, NVIDIA looks something like this. This is wave one and wave two. This is a large wave three rally. No matter how you count wave one, we should see NVIDIA hold above 171 and make a new all-time high and break above this wave three high. The wave five target zone is between 218 and 224. And that's based on the length of wave one. Just like Apple, that would happen in the next six to eight weeks, assuming wave four has already been put in. So I think NVIDIA is a great indicator for the market. Now, I'm not quite sure about the implied volatility. We just had a huge stock split. So what bar chart is saying is that this is 100% implied volatility rank and percentile. I'm not quite sure if that's due to the stock split and we had that dramatic move, but either way, NVIDIA's options are pretty hot right now. I'm not quite sure it's the best opportunity, but it's no doubt a great indicator for the rest of the market. We want to see it above the 50% retracement of 171 and go on a wave five higher to about 218 to 224. That's likely going to happen in the same time frame of Apple, you know, within six to eight weeks, in my opinion, by the end of the quarter even, uh, once wave four is in, assuming wave four is not already in. And wave four could be in right now, at 178, we'll see the length of wave one placed at the wave four low. Take it to 224 to 218. Right now, the 50% retracement of wave three is 171. That's the wave four invalidation. All right, Apple looks a little prettier because the 50% retracement of wave three coincides with the wave one high between 136 and 137. So right now, bulls really want to see Apple's going to hold above 136 to 137. Go the length of wave one placed at the wave four low take Apple into the 160s by the end of the quarter. So that's Apple. That's NVIDIA. Here's Amazon coming into this week. Amazon was a lot of evidence. Wait a minute. We're still likely have a lot more upside, right? So this is 
what we had for Amazon, this was a wave one and a wave two that was put in at the 61.8% retracement. The very conservative wave three target was going to be the length of wave one placed at the wave two low. And that would take Amazon to 3,805. So 3,805 was the conservative wave three target. So that's this black wave three right here. So I believe that this wave three in black is subdivided into five waves. This is wave one of wave three, wave two of wave three, wave three of wave three, and wave four of wave three. I hope you guys can see this is at the 38.2% retracement. So the length of um, wave five will take Nvidia, will take Amazon, sorry, into this wave three target zone, which is between 3,805 to about 3,969. That would just complete wave three between 3,800 to 39, 3,969 would just complete wave three uh, from that March 5th low. Then I would expect a shallow wave four correction between the 23.6 and the 38.2% retracement to put in a wave four. And then I would be looking for Amazon to go the length of wave one, place at the wave four low, go all the way to 4,300 for the wave five target from that March 5th low. So I think Amazon is a lot of evidence and came, coming into this week was a lot of evidence that the minimum wave three target had not yet been reached. And that even when it is reached, that's likely not going to be the top. Amazon will put in wave three between 3,805 to 3,969 before a shallow wave four correction and then a fifth wave higher that would take Amazon to, in my opinion, pretty conservatively 4,300. So I'm still looking for more upside for Amazon uh, on a lot of time horizons. So that's Amazon. I think it's a lot of evidence for the market. When do bulls get to celebrate? I think advanced market devices and in phase energy will give true cause for celebration uh, pretty soon. So this is advanced market devices on the smaller degree. This is the May 13th low. And I believe AMD on the small term time frames has formed a one, two, three, four, and we're looking for a fifth wave higher. So I'm not sure AMD is a great setup on this small time frame to play wave five higher. But I think what bulls really want to see from advanced market devices is that from this May 13th low, we go wave one, wave two, wave three. This is wave four. And once AMD goes on wave five higher and breaks 95, that's going to be a big deal for stock market bulls. And that's going to confirm that this is a five waves impulse from this May 13th low. So what's going to happen is when AMD goes one, two, three, four, wave five will confirm that this is an impulse structure and strongly uh, strengthen the case that we've made a very important low for AMD at 72.50. So it will go one, two, three, four, five, confirm this is an impulse structure. And these five waves will form a large wave one impulse then bulls will be very eager to buy the wave two correction to ride waves three four and five higher so on the larger degree you know it still looks very pretty very similar to qualcomm and taiwan semiconductors where this is a wave one and a wave two this is a large wave three impulse we have an abc correction and put in wave four at exactly the 38.2 percent retracement i believe in advanced micro devices situation the length of wave three placed at the wave four low will be the wave five target of 136. And we will see that hit very aggressively by the end of the year. But I think the you know more just right time target is by the end of the first quarter, we see 136 be reached. So that's advanced market devices. It looks very similar to in phase energy on this smaller degree time frame, even down to the date that this is a May 11th low. What we want to see from Enphase Energy is the same thing as AMD, that this is a very important low we formed in the middle of May. This is wave one and wave two. This is wave three and wave four. The length of wave five will, regardless, take Enphase Energy above this wave three high of 196. So in the same way, it's going to be cause for celebration for bulls when AMD breaks above 95. It's going to be cause for celebration for bulls when Enphase Energy breaks above 196 because that will confirm, just like AMD, that this is a five waves impulse from the May 11th low. And bulls will be very eager to buy this wave two correction. So just like AMD, 
in phase energy is going to go one, two, three, four, and a fifth wave higher will complete a larger degree wave one. And bulls will be very eager to buy this wave two correction for in phase energy to ride waves three, four, and five higher. That's in phase energy. That's AMD. I think from you know the more bearish perspective, or at least from the bearish side of the argument, you know to be cautious. The Dow Jones ETF DIA is going to give a pretty important level that bulls don't want to see broken. Okay, when do we have to start respecting the bears? In my opinion, it's when the Dow Jones ETF DIA, if it does, breaks below 332. And I'll explain why in a second. Let's look at the larger degree first. I think on, on the larger degree, this is a wave one, very cleanly subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. This is an ABC correction that's put in a wave too low, right? Remember, it was too, it was too uncertain from a fundamental perspective to invest before the election, right? But Elliott Wave theorists like myself, you know, we were saying, oh, this is this is really pretty right here. We've been very bullish on the stock market since before the election when SPY was in the 320s. Okay, the word uncertainty is a synonym for opportunity uh, from a fundamental perspective. And from a wave theory perspective, you're going to find that a lot where it's most, you know, scary to invest uh, from a fundamental perspective when the wave theory is saying, oh, that's A, B, C, the length of wave A, place of the wave B high is exactly where wave C ended. And we're looking for a huge rally higher. So on the larger degree, this is a one, two, three, four, five waves impulse that completed a larger degree wave one. This is an ABC correction to put in a large degree wave two. So the length of wave one placed at the wave too low gives the Dow Jones ETF DIA a conservative wave three target of 372. So remember, Elliott waves are fractal in nature. This is the more important count that the length of wave one placed at the wave too low gives a conservative wave three target of three, 372. That's what I call the destination because that's where we're heading. The smaller degree is the path. How are we going to get there? So I believe the path is that from this October 30th low, this is wave one of wave three, this is wave two of wave three, and this is wave three of wave three. This ABC correction completed wave four of wave three at 332. We are now within wave five of wave three from the election low. So I think it looks something like this. This is a very important wave four low of 332. Okay, we don't want to see the bears break below that. And if they don't, it's extremely bullish because I believe that this is wave one and we put in a wave two low at exactly the 61.8% retracement. So the wave three target is the 161.8% 1 extension of wave one, which is 361. Then we would look for a shallow wave four correction between the 23.6 and the 38.2% retracement to put in wave four. Then the length of wave one placed at the wave four low would take the Dow Jones ETF DIA on a wave five higher to guess where? 372. So it almost lines up too perfectly that the subdivision of this one, two, three, four, five waves impulse will take the Dow Jones ETF DIA to exactly what on the larger degree is the destination, the length of wave one placed at the wave too low from the election. So if bulls hold DIA above 332, very bullish for the Dow Jones industrial average. So that's DIA. Let's talk about Taiwan Semiconductors. This is a really pretty setup. If you go to the price overview, I'm not telling anyone to buy options, but the options market is telling you 0% implied volatility percentile, 0% implied volatility rank. And we've seen Taiwan Semiconductors all over the bar chart, straddle and strangle screener with Qualcomm, with Intel, uh, the, and with advanced market devices. Does that mean that, that Taiwan Semiconductors is going to have a huge move to the upside? Absolutely not. But what it does give is a lot of confirmation Taiwan Semiconductors is done consolidating and it's ready for a large move. The wave theory, in my opinion, is very clear. That move most likely will be to the upside. So just like AMD, I believe this is wave one and wave two. This is a huge wave three impulse and an ABC corrections put in wave four at 107. So bulls were a hold above 107 and the 38.2% retracement of 104 is what we really want to see cap 
any uh, more downside. If we hold above 104 to 107, then I believe Taiwan Semiconductors will go on a wave five higher that will be the length of wave three placed at the wave four low, and TSM will go all the way to 208 with AMD, and it's the same time horizon where extremely aggressively that happens by the end of the year. I think just like AMD, the more just right time horizon is the first quarter of 2022 we see that Taiwan Semiconductors has begun a huge wave five rally higher and is getting close to 208. So that's Taiwan Semiconductors. Here's Tesla. Let's talk about the EV stocks for a little bit. Tesla is looking pretty good. When we have these big sell-offs in the market, it's one of two possibilities. It's either the start of a super crash or it's a massive rotation into sectors that have previously been lagging. Okay, I believe it's the latter and that you know, two sectors that we're going to see really come alive are clean energy and some of these more inflation uh, specific plays like the value side of the market. And I think Kathy Wood's corner of the market is going to get some love too. So this is Tesla. I believe this is wave one and wave two. This is a huge wave three impulse and an ABC corrections put in wave four at the 38.2% retracement. So on the smaller degree, it's important to remember this is the exact same January 25th high that the bear said Apple was never going to break above, right? The bear said that Apple was never going to break above this high. It was going to go the length of this sell-off placed at Apple's high of 137, and that was going to take Apple to 110. This is the exact same count the bears still have for Tesla, even though Apple has already blown it out of the water. So the same scenario that had Apple going to 110 is what the bears think is going to take Tesla to 410. Okay, and we saw how that worked out with Apple. This is why you have to trade the market as a whole. Apple's already broken above this January 25th high. And if you go on the bar chart, straight on the strangle screener, this is all over the screener. That Tesla is going to have a monster move and the institutions are piling in to options on Tesla. Okay, does that mean the Tesla's going to explode to the upside? No. It did in late October. That was the same scenario. But what it does guarantee is that institutions are extremely interested in options on Tesla right now. So Tesla's days of just going sideways, Tesla's days of just going sideways in the 650, 700, 600 range, they're coming to an end. Tesla's about to have a monster move. And in my opinion, I mean, look at this. You don't see this every day. That Tesla is taking up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten slots on the bar chart strangle screener. Okay. Th this is extremely rare that a stock will be accruing this much open interest. That 10 slots on the bar chart strangle screener are taken by one stock. Okay, this is extremely rare. Tesla is about to have a monster move. If the debate it's whether or not Tesla's going to the 410s or the 1300s, that's fine. But Tesla's days consolidating between 600 and 700 are numbered. And I think that number is honestly, you know, below five. Okay, Tesla's going to have a crazy move. It's up to us as Elliott Wave theorists to decide, will that move be to the upside or the downside? Okay, the bears... This is the exact same January 25th high. They said Apple's never going above this high, ever, right? Apple's going the length of this, you know, sell-off place of this high to 110. That's the same thing they're saying about Tesla right now. Okay, I don't think that's the case. I believe that this is wave one and wave two. The 161.8% extension of wave one is 929. Okay, to clear it up on the smaller degree, I've just put that this is 929. But this is this 929 number comes from the 161.8% uh, extension of wave one. So this is wave one and wave two. This is a wave three that I'm expecting to 929 before a shallow wave four correction and a fifth wave higher. So on the larger degree, I believe that this is going to be a wave one and a wave two. This is a huge wave three rally and an ABC corrections put in a wave four low at the 38.2% retracement. It's not going to be the length of wave one place of the wave four low for this wave five target. In my opinion, it's going to be the length of wave three place of the wave four low 
and that's going to take Tesla to 1,368 for a wave five target. Extremely aggressively, that will happen by the end of the year. Just like AMD and Taiwan Semiconductors, I think that conservatively will happen within the first quarter of 2022. I think the options market agrees with me. But what could this be? What if that's not wave three and wave four? What this could be is that that's another wave one. And this is another wave two. And when Tesla gets to 1370, it's going to blow past that number. So what I'm saying is bulls should use their imagination if Tesla's above 546 to 539. Because most likely, that's not a wave three and a wave four. And that this count to 1370 is going to end up being conservative. And Tesla's not going to go alone. Okay? We'll talk about NEO right now. NEO's gotten off to a good start. I think on the larger degree, it looks something like this. This is a wave one subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. This is an ABC correction putting in a wave too low. I think right now on the smaller degree, it looks something like this, where this is wave one and wave two as well. So for now, bulls want to make sure NEO holds above 30. I know that's far away, but it's not too far away from where I talked about NEO. And we're going to see the length of wave one place at this wave too low take NEO to the 90s. So both NEO and Tesla have the potential to double by the end of the first quarter of 2022. Okay, the length of wave one, place of the wave too low, is going to take NEO to 96. This is a one, two, three, four, five waves, large degree wave one. This is an ABC correction putting in a large degree wave two. NEO will hold above 30, go the length of wave one, place of the wave too low, and reach 96. So Tesla and NEO, they're getting ready to move together. I like XPEV and I've always liked Lee Auto as longer term plays for myself personally, but these are looking really good. It's a wave one and ABC corrections putting in a wave too low. The length of wave one, place of the wave too low, will take XPEV to 80. And there's a lot of these electric vehicle stocks that look very explosive. I'm not sure XPEV is the best opportunity right now, but I think it's a lot of evidence for this clean energy sector. We're getting ready to rumble. You know, we talked about in phase energy and in my opinion, the back of my head is saying this rotation for the past three or four days wasn't the beginning of a crash. It was a massive rotation into a couple of sectors. And I think clean energy is going to stand out as one of them. So this is XPEV. We're building on this IT Mocha Cloud breakout. I think in the short term, XPEV bulls want to see this, this cloud of 35 to about 33 hold with the true wave two invalidation for, you know, the longer term traders being 23, confirming that's the wave too low. The length of wave one place of this wave too low will take XPEV to 80. It's going to break above this wave three high. Basically, it's going to form a cup and handle and then go on a fifth wave higher. But XPEV very early into its life cycle looking very good. So that's XPEV. Lee Auto is almost identical to XPEV. And I think all of these are just giving confirmation when we talk about Tesla and NEO and, you know, Enphase Energy and First Solar, all these clean energy stocks, that this is a one, two, three, four, five, large degree wave one. This is an ABC correction putting in a large degree wave two. Lee Auto is going to hold above the low 16, which is way down from where it is currently. And then it's going to go on a wave three rally higher. It will be the length of wave one, place of the wave too low. It's going to head to 50 while XPEV is heading to 80. And they're both going to form, in my opinion, cup and handle patterns, break above this wave one high and be, you know, very lucrative for uh, the traders who had what it took to buy uh, that wave two dip in the second quarter. Lee Auto, another one building on this IT Mocha Cloud breakout, looking very good. So this is, this is what I like to see. Uh, I think in the short term, you know, Lee Auto Bulls want to see 26 hold and go um, on a, you know, continue to build on this IT Mocha Cloud breakout, head to the median of this pitchfork, head to 49, while XPEV heads to 80. So looking very good. Uh, Lee Auto and XPEV, I think, are a lot of confirmation when we talk about Tesla and NEO having dramatic moves higher. Another one is Akramoto. This is another one that's looking pretty explosive. This is the wave one subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. This is a 10, 11 month rally. And if we place it at the wave two low of 7.32, if Akramoto is above 7.32, I believe it gets replicated twice more uh, from this low way back in March 2020. 
I believe this 78.6% retracement of about 8.64 is capping this ABC wave two correction. And then Akramoto is going to go all the way to a conservative wave three target of 43. I think this will happen within the first quarter of 2022. I think a lot of these clean energy stocks are going to really surprise us. And really even the whole growth sector is going to really surprise us in the second half of the year. So Akramoto is looking really good. The length of wave one places the wave too low. We'll take Akramoto to 43. Akramoto, by the way, 39% short interest the last time I checked. Let's talk about some software stocks. This is uh, Cloudfare, ticker symbol NET. Not sure it's the best setup, but it's going very well uh, for how I projected. This is a large wave one, cleanly subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. This is an ABC correction, putting in a wave too low. The length of wave one places the wave too low. We'll take... Cloudfare, ticker symbol NET, to 124 for an equal X target. That's looking very good to be reached. So this is that mid-February high. We're asking a lot of software stocks, are they going to break? I think Cloudfare has already given us the answer. You know, this is basically the same high that Roku forms. Um, we talk about SEC Limited in some of my other videos, uh, ticker symbol SE. But I think Cloudfare is building on this breakout. I think the subdivision of this wave three looks something like this. This is wave one, wave two, and this is wave three of wave three. We're putting in wave four of wave three right now. And then we're going to go on a wave a five of a wave three that takes Cloudfare all the way to 124. Not a great opportunity, but a great uh, indicator, a leading indicator, in my opinion, for a lot of the software stocks that we're about to talk about. So here's Okta. Love Okta a lot. This is looking pretty that this is a wave one and a wave two. The length of wave one places the wave too low. We'll take Okta to 322 for that larger degree wave three target. In the smaller degree, I think it looks something like this. This is a wave one uh, that I should probably make in red just to make it a different color. I'll make this wave one and wave two in red. This is a wave one that's very cleanly subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. And then this is a wave two, an ABC wave two correction. So Okta has gone on a wave one subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. This is an ABC wave two correction. And this is another wave one and another wave two. I believe Okta will hold above this low of 209. And it's going to start heading to that larger degree wave three target. I've had 308 being hit in September for a while. I think that's still possible. We got pretty close, you know, during that initial pop to 282. You know, I think 310 by September is still on the table, but I think pretty conservatively, you know, in the second half of this year, we'll talk about Autodesk in a second. You know, we see within the fourth quarter of 2021 that Okta reaches 308 to 322 very conservatively, and that's a conservative equal eggs wave three target. So I love Okta. If it's above 209, I should see it in the, you know, low 300s, 310 to 322 range very soon. That's Okta. Let's talk about Autodesk. Pretty similar setup. If you look at Autodesk, it's just looking pretty. I mean, Autodesk, this is why you have to trade the market as a whole. It's almost above the high uh, that it formed, you know, early in July, you know, on July 6th of about 301. I mean, it's only 4 or $5 away, and that would confirm on the smaller degree. You know, this probably isn't a, a super crash that we're experiencing, but this is a wave one. In my opinion, a very clear wave one. Notice how these important lows are put in right at the September quad witching. This is a wave one subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. This is an ABC correction, putting in a wave too low at exactly the 61.8% retracement. Then this is another wave one and another wave two. The classical traders are going to say, hey, that's not a wave one or wave two. Get that wave crap off the screen. This is a bull flag, you know, symmetrical triangle pattern. I think the wave theory and the classical traders agree. The length of this wave one which they'll call the first leg of the bull flag, place it the wave too low, will take Autodesk to about 359. I think that very conservatively is going to get reached by the end of the year. I think by November, we've seen the length of wave one, place it the wave too low, get Autodesk to 359. Right now, I want to see this smaller degree, wave one and wave two low of 265 continue to hold. So Autodesk looking very good. I want to talk about Pinterest real quick. Pinterest, you know, I'm going to sound crazy for this one, but I really think this is all a wave one in an ABC correction, putting in a wave too low. I think right now Pinterest is above 53. The most, the most high probability scenario is that it will replicate this rally 
and go the length of wave one place of the wave too low so pinterest above 53 is going to 134 and as wild as that sounds this is from 316 to 215 is another one where this 10 11 month rally is going to get hit you know in the first half of 2022 likely even the first quarter of 2022 that we see this 2020 rally get replicated it's all over the growth side of the market i think pinterest is a wave one an abc correction you know this is one of those shorter wave twos if it's above 53 you know i think it's heading to 134 you know for the next you know step higher uh, in its rally. So I think this is very young in Pinterest's life cycle. This is a wave one and ABC correction putting in a wave too low and it seems aggressive, but I think that this is a textbook wave two we've put in at 53. The length of wave A placed with the wave B high is where we've gotten this reversal. Pinterest will hold above 53, go the length of wave one placed with the wave too low. We're going to wake up early in the 2022 and see Pinterest is at 134. It's all over the growth side of the market. Palantir, is very similar to what we talked about with nano dimension recently of the idea that this whole rally is from october you know to january 27th it's probably too early in palander's life cycle to talk about seasonality but in my opinion very clear one two three four five waves impulse forming a large wave one this is an abc correction putting in a large wave two and right now for palander bulls it's simple if it's above 17 that's a wave too low now if it broke below 17 it, that would be very close to the 78.6% retracement, which is 16.40. So bulls really want to see Palantir above 16.40 to 17.05, basically the same number. And if it does, this is wave one. This is an ABC correction putting in a wave too low. And then this is another wave one and another wave two. So I've said for a while, I think Palantir reaches the 50s by the end of the year. It's been consolidating for a little bit. I still think 50 is on the table. If it didn't happen by the end of the year, in my opinion, it would happen with you know, what we're seeing in the rest of the entire growth side of the market from advanced micro devices to, you know, Acromoto to a lot of the solar energy stocks to Pinterest to, you know, Okta to the software stocks. It's all over the growth side of the market. Kathy Wood is making this comeback and this whole rally three to four months gets replicated in time and price. If, if Palantir is above 17, it's going to be another one of these software stocks that's gone one, two, one, two. It's going to hold above 17 in the next conservative. I know it doesn't sound conservative, but the conservative wave three target is 53. So Palantir Bulls, we really want to see in the short term, we hold above 17. And if we do, this is a wave three of a larger wave three in progress. The next target is the meeting of this pitchfork and the wave three equal eggs target of 53. So that's Palantir. It's looking good if it's above 17. Here's Salesforce. This is another one. I think the classical traders, they're going to say, get this wave crap off the screen. This is a wave. This is the first leg of a bull flag. This is that sideways uh, bull flag consolidation, what they'll call a falling wedge. And then they've broken out of this, you know, downtrend line. I think in the very short term, 220 is going to be a pretty important level of interest for Salesforce bulls. The true invalidation for this wave too low is going to be 201. I think that it looks something like this. This is a wave one and a wave two. This is another wave one and another wave two. Salesforce will hold above 201, go the length of wave one, place it the wave too low. It's another one where we see, you know, aggressively by the end of the year, conservatively in the first quarter of 2022, that Salesforce reaches that equal X target for wave three of 356. I have the more aggressive one, two, one, two nest count. I think the other way to count it would be to say that this is wave one and wave two. This is wave three and wave four. And then the length of wave three in place of the wave four low is that wave five target of 356. So it's the same number, uh, but in this scenario, 356 would be a pretty important, you know, level for Salesforce bulls to get out. So either way, if it's above 200, 201, I think Salesforce is ready for a massive move. And this is another one. This whole rally is from late March to late August. It's exactly five months. And I think it's going to get going pretty soon. And this is one where the, the classical traders are going to say, get that wave stuff off the screen. This is the first leg of a bull flag. The length of this rally placed at this low is going to be that bull flag target of 356. And honestly, I agree with them. So Salesforce, if it's above 201, should get going into the 350s very quickly. That's Salesforce. Let's talk about Roku. Roku is, you know, I really liked Roku. When I talked about it, you know, I think it was in the 340s. 
the 320s we've gotten a pretty nice pop i think that this is just another one we talk about because it's the the software side of the market the growth side of the market it's the same message it's very similar to you know what we talk about with a lot of these semiconductors where this is likely a wave three and an abc correction has ended at the 50 percent retracement so that's either going to be a wave four low or what we'll talk about in a second another wave one and another wave two either way I believe the length of wave three places the wave four low is going to be Roku's wave five target. That's going to take Roku into 707. I think conservatively Roku will see 707 uh, within that first quarter of 2022. It's another one. It sounded crazy when I talked about it, but we're getting very close. You know, when we talk about bull celebrating, once Roku's above that February 15th high, then another software stock like SEC Limited and Cloudflare have already broken above. That's going to be a huge deal, especially for growth bulls, confirming this is all an ABC correction. This was all consolidation. And then Roku's going to break out, go on a wave five higher. There will be the length of wave three, a place with the wave four low. I think we see Roku at 707 in the first quarter of 2022. And I think that could even be conservative, as wild as that sounds, because that likely is not going to be a wave three and a wave four. In my opinion, it's probably going to be a nest where that's a, another wave one and another wave two. We see that wave three target reach 707, but in this scenario, that wouldn't be the top. We'd have a shallow wave four correction before a fifth wave higher. So I think there's a lot of upside for Roku. I think, especially for growth investors, Roku breaking that high of 486, that same high Cloudflare and SEC Limited have already broken is gonna be a big deal. So that's Roku. Here's Microvision. I mean, here's Riot Blockchain. We'll talk about Microvision in a second. This is looking good. I mean, this is really looking good that we're putting in a low right here for Riot Blockchain of 20. Now, what's important about 20 is that's right next to the 78.6% retracement of 18.86. So I think this is a huge chart for crypto bulls that this is a wave one. And this whole wave one is from September 24th to 217. I mean, that's about five or six months that Riot Blockchain went on a just breathtaking wave one rally i believe that this is an a b c correction the length of wave a placed with the wave b high is exactly where we get this you know kind of turnaround i think right now if riot blockchain is above 20 and the 78.6 percent retracement which is right near of 18.86 that's a wave too low that's been put in and then we're within wave three on the larger degree and in the short term it's going to be wave three on the smaller degree as well so very important chart for all crypto bulls we want to see Riot Blockchain hold above 20 to 18.86, confirm that's a wave too low, and then, holy cow, the length of wave one places this wave too low, takes Riot Blockchain into near 100. I mean, the wave three target is 98, and this is another one. This is a five-month rally. So when we talk about these crazy targets for Bitcoin, by the end of the year, you know, a stock like Riot Blockchain is where we get that evidence. This is a five or six month rally. If this truly is the wave too low at 20, then the conservative wave three target would be 98. It could happen by the end of the year. I think conservatively it happens in the first quarter of 2022. So Riot Blockchain, all crypto investors want to know, will it hold 18 to 20 and go the length of wave one, place the wave too low? I think we're going to find out very soon. That's Riot Blockchain. Here's Microvision. Like this, like this setup, it's a wave one, cleanly subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves, an ABC correction put in a wave two low at that 61.8% retracement. And then I believe this is another wave one and another wave two. So this is another wave one and another wave two. So wave three of wave three of wave three, in my opinion, is on the horizon for microvision. Pretty tight. Bulls want this wave two low of 12.22 to hold. If it does, then we're within wave three of wave three. I think the wider invalidation, especially for a growth stock like Microvision, is going to be 10.08 to confirm this wave too low has been put in at the 61.8% retracement. And then on the larger degree, five to seven months from now, the length of wave one places the wave too low, provided Microvision holds above 10.08, will take it all the way to 32 that's microvision it's another one i think we wake up in the first quarter of 2022 we've seen it go to that conservative wave three target of 32 and this is one reason i kind of like it as a longer term idea because once it gets to that wave three target of 32 that's just wave three we'll see a shallow wave four correction before a fifth wave higher let's end with some value stocks real quick berkshire hathaway it's just another great template for the market 
especially the value side of the market. I believe that this is a wave one and a wave two. This is a wave three rally and ABC corrections put in a wave four low. We want to see the 38.2% retracement of 266 hold. And if it does, the length of wave one placed at this wave four low will take Burke B to 310. My time target is that's going to happen in, in the next three to four months. So I like Burke B. I think it's got a high probability of going on a fifth wave higher. And it's a lot of evidence, you know, that the market probably isn't going to be crashing if Burke B holds above 266 and heads to 310. Disney is another one. We started to get a breakout and then we, we pulled back a little bit. I think it's another one we want to see. Uh, the 38.2% retracement was exactly where we got this reversal. We want to see Disney continue to hold above 167. The you know wider waveform validation is the 50% retracement of 155. But I think Disney will go on a one, two, three, four, five waves impulse to complete a larger degree wave one. And then this wave three, we have a lot of evidence of the wave three because it's subdivided into one, two, three. Sorry, it's subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. So I think Disney right now is a one, two, three, four. We're going to go the length of wave one, place it the wave four low, and conservatively see Disney go on a rally higher to 216. Short term, we want to see that that's the wave four low of 167. The wider wave four validation is the 50% retracement of 155. That's Disney. Let's talk about Boeing real quick. We're starting to see, you know, a little bit of evidence that this is a pretty important um, low we've put in. I think right now, the most important thing is that on the larger degree that Boeing holds above 191. So this larger degree count that this is a wave one and ABC corrections put in a wave two low. And then this is, this is another wave one and another wave two is still intact. So right now we want to see that this is a wave one and a wave two. Boeing will not break below 191 and it will go on a wave three rally higher that will take it to 296 to about 307. Okay, if Boeing holds above 191, I think that this rally to, you know, about that 300 level is going to catch a lot of people off guard and that that's going to happen in that same kind of two, three month time horizon that Berkshire Hathaway and Disney are going on their wave fives higher to take Disney to 216 and Berkshire Hathaway to 310. Okay, I was wrong that the airlines were going to melt up in the first two months of this quarter. But I still think they're going to have a massive rally higher. I think it's a lot of uh, good news for bulls that we got this reversal before we broke the wave too low of 191. And the larger degree, more important count that this is a 1212 Elliott Wave Nest is still intact. It's important to note once Boeing gets to 296 to 307, that's just wave three. We'll have a shallow wave four correction before going on a fifth wave higher. Ultimately, I think Boeing's wave three takes it all the way to the median of this pitchfork and that eventually we're going to see Boeing in that 400 range. So that's Boeing. I think Pfizer, we started to get some, some love from Pfizer that this is a wave one and a wave two right at that 61.8% retracement. It's looking good. I think in the short term, Pfizer goes on a, uh, you know, the first leg of a bull flag, what the wave theorists can call either wave one or wave A. And then this is either going to be wave two or wave B. And then we're going to see Pfizer go on a wave three or a wave C rally higher. No matter how you count it, bulls want to see Pfizer hold above 37 to 38. And then the length of wave one or wave A, what the classical traders will just call the first leg of a bull flag, placed at the wave two or wave B low, will give a conservative wave three target of 45. What's really important about that is that that's going to take Pfizer above this wave one high. And that's going to be a huge deal of for Pfizer bulls. Once Pfizer breaks above 43, it's going to confirm this is wave one and wave two. We've broken above or when we break above 43, that's going to confirm this wave two low is in. We're within wave three. This was all consolidation. This was all basing and bulls. You know, the longer term bulls probably caught a monster, just a dividend aristocrat paying monster. That's going to go all the way into the 60s and eventually the 90s in the bigger picture. So Pfizer looking really good. I think that bull flag equal X target takes it to 45. More importantly, it will take it above uh, the wave one high of 43. This is Procter & Gamble. Just real quick, I want to brush on this. One, two, three, four, five, large degree wave one. And ABC Correction puts in a large degree wave two. On the smaller degree, I thought we got a pretty important development that we broke above these highs right here. 
of about 139 and i think what we've confirmed is that this is a one two three four five waves impulse on the smaller degree so what bulls can do they can move that stop up to 130 and say we want that to be the wave too low and we're going to go on a wave three rally higher to at least 147 and so this is going to be we're within wave three of a larger degree wave three i believe that ultimately five uh procter and gamble will go all the way to 174 with walmart aggressively that's going to happen by the end of the year that walmart will get to 178 and uh, procter and gamble will go to 174 i think in the shorter term we're getting confirmation that we're within uh, wave three on the smaller degree and we're also within wave three on the larger degree as well so i think walmart is about to uh, catch up to procter and gamble i'm going to turn off the it mocha cloud and i think what it looks like very similar on the smaller degree is that this is a one two three four five large degree wave one this is an abc correction putting in that wave too low what we want to see is that walmart will follow procter and gamble above this wave one high of 144 confirm this is wave one and wave two and walmart is within wave three of a larger degree wave three when we clone the length of this wave one and place it the wave too low we get that very aggressive target of 178 for walmart which coincides perfectly with the 174 target we're looking for for procter and gamble so i think walmart and procter and gamble are looking very good i think it's great news for walmart that procter and gamble has broken above this wave one high i think it's going to be a big deal when walmart breaks above 144 bulls right now they want to see 135 not get broken. If they want to be a little wider, they want to see 129 to 132 not get broken either. So that's Walmart. Let's talk about Lowe's. I haven't talked about Lowe's. I think this is a pretty chart on the smaller degree. I think it looks something like this. This is a wave one and a wave two. This is a large wave three impulse. I think this is an A, B, C correction that's put in a wave four low right at that 38.2% retracement. So I think in the smaller degree, we want to see the 50% retracement of wave three, which is 183, not get broken. I think there's a lot of upside for lows right here where it will go the length of wave three, place of the wave four low and reach that wave five target of 249. So I think 249 is the wave five target from this 1118 low, that this is wave one and wave two. This is wave three and wave four. The length of wave three, place of the wave four low will take lows pretty aggressively to 249 by the end of the year that's only about 50 55 dollars higher i like it if it's above 183 it's a pretty setup you know especially for you know those who are more inclined to you know trade stocks and uptrends but i think on the larger degree it's interesting because what you sometimes see from a wave theory standpoint is this idea that this is a, a wave one and wave two and a wave three that we put in in kind of the middle of october and then what uh, some wave theorists think is that we're within this elongated wave five. I tend to believe uh, that this is actually a wave one and a wave two. And then we're within wave three right now, not just for lows, but on the you know larger indices as well. I think you know it's pretty interesting that some wave theorists will say that this is a wave one and a wave two because if you take that this is a wave three in a wave four, then the length of wave three placed at the wave four low would give a larger degree wave five target of 249, which is what we just talked about on the smaller degree as well. So the bottom line, I think that 249 is gonna act as a very important level for lows. I think we're gonna see 249. If it's above 183, I think there's a high likelihood that happens uh, by the end of the year. My full count for lows, I actually think it's something like this. This is a wave one and a wave two. And then this wave one is subdivided into uh, one, two, three, four, five waves. And it looks something like this. But either way, 249, I think is going to be a very important level. I think lows is going to reach it. And if it's above 183, I really like this setup.